Bluegrass Jamalong is proud to be sponsored by Collins Guitars and Mandolins, each and every one built from the sound up in Austin, Texas. This episode is also brought to you by Peghead Nation, the home of Roots Music Instruction. If you want to improve your playing, join me and thousands of other pickers getting better every day at pegheadnation.com. Hi, this is Matt, and you're listening to Bluegrass Jam Along, the podcast for anyone and everyone who loves bluegrass. Welcome back to Bluegrass Jam Along. This is your Bluegrass Briefing for Monday the, what are we on, 16th of September 2024. And um, We haven't had one of these for a couple of weeks. I've been on holiday and various other bits going on. If you've been around this podcast for a while, you'll know that August gets a little bit quiet with holidays and various other bits. But also my um, son started at secondary school a couple of weeks ago and we've got two different sets of builders working on the house and life is fun. So <laughs> just a lot going on. So it's been a little bit... Um, up and down over the last couple of weeks but we're getting back on it um, and I'm going to get a load of content out in IBMA that will go on the podcast and I've got some very exciting things lined up so back at it um, and what have we had so just before I went on holiday I put out an episode with Jason Berlindi from Fretboard Journal so if you missed that go back and check that out that was a great chat really interesting um, just yeah I mean what he's sort of built there over 20 years is fascinating and he's a really cool guy really enjoyed the conversation do go back and check that one out um also, last week, Jerry Douglas had Jerry Douglas back on the podcast to talk about his brand new record, The Set, and that was a treat. Really, really interesting. Um, Jerry's just a great guest. I mean, you know, you can just wind him up and let him go. He's so full of stories, anecdotes, wisdom, warmth, generosity, and he's Jerry Douglas. So check that out if you haven't. That was also very, very cool. Um, I am off to IBMA next week, it is now. God, it's come around quickly. Um, which I'm really excited about. I went last year when I won the Momentum Award, but I only got to stay till Thursday afternoon, so I missed sort of the big awards ceremony and the festival and kind of meeting a load of people that were only there at the weekend. Uh, but I'm there for the whole thing this time. Well, I'm coming out on Wednesday. So I'm really excited about that. There's lots of cool stuff to see, um, and I'm very excited by that. If anybody else is going to be out there, drop me a message on social media or email me. You might have Bluegrass Jam along. It'd be cool to meet some podcast listeners and some of those of you that I've chatted to over the past few years. Um, yeah, let's crack on with the Bluegrass Briefing, which has a bit of an international feel, actually, this week. Uh, quite a lot to fit in, which is very cool. Um, one thing before we get on with it, can I just please ask you to do me a favour? If you like this podcast and you enjoy it, please share it with anybody you know who likes Bluegrass, who might not have heard of it. Particularly those people you know that don't really do podcasts yet. There's so much great podcast content out there now, not just this podcast um, but things like Mandolin's and Beer or Craig Havoghurst's The String or Basic Folk or Picky Fingers Banjo Podcast or there's so much really good bluegrass content. I think podcasting is an exciting thing. Things like Chris Pandolfi's Inside the Musician's Brain. It's all good stuff. Um, so get your friends listening to podcasts and tell them about this one particularly. I would really appreciate that. Um, and if you do want to support Bluegrass Jam Along, you can subscribe on Apple Podcasts um, for a small amount per month to listen ad-free and help support the podcast. But that is it. Let us crack on with the news and announcements, which is the section that we call Church Dream News. <laughs> first bit of Church Street News comes from the episode with Jerry Douglas and he let us know that Alison Crouch and Union Station are gearing up to go back out into the world in 2025 and they have not one but two brand new albums recorded and on the way. Um, and there is more news about Alison Crouch and Union Station which will sort of be delivered over the coming weeks and months about those records and what's going on with the tour and things like that. But yeah, exciting. Now, Alison spent quite a bit of time with Robert Plant on those projects in recent years and it's exciting to think that Union Station would be back out on the road. I've never seen them so I'm hoping they come to the UK. That would be very exciting. Uh, so that's the first thing. Um, moving on to the next thing, Punch Brothers um, have this project called Energy Curfew Music Hour that's sort of hosted by Chris Thiele but Punch Brothers are the house band and it's a kind of um, 
live from here Prairie Home Companion type affair with music and guests and sketches and all sorts. But they recorded them all end of last year, beginning of this year for Audible and they've all been being edited and put together and they're due out on Audible on I believe the 10th of October. Um, so more on that nearer the time. But I'm really excited to hear those. Just, I mean, obviously, I love Punch Brothers, so that's enough to get me going. But lots of musical guests, lots of different stuff, quite a variety of um, content on there. I'm really looking forward to hearing it. So, yeah, that's the Energy Curfew Music Hour coming next month. Um, also coming next month will be a new album from Tim Stafford and Tom Yutz, who, if you remember, we had on the podcast to talk about Nothing But Green Willow, um, the record they put out, I think it was last year. Um and Tim's been on the podcast two or three times now. A very good friend of this podcast, Tim Stafford. And both of them are great writers and, yeah, just guitarists and works cool together. So I'm really looking forward to hearing some new music from them. Um, what else? IBMA. The IBMA um, keynote this year is going to be called A Year of Jubilee, Changing Our Conversations About Music and Mental Health. And that's Becky Buller delivering that on Tuesday, the opening day of IBMA, Tuesday the 24th of September. Um, And I'm so gutted I'm not going to be there for that. I had a great chat with Becky about Jubilee, both her record Jubilee and just this idea of taking space to to deal with the things life throws at you. Um, Fascinating conversation. Go and check that one out if you didn't hear it. It wasn't that long ago, it was a few weeks back. Um, And I think that's going to be a really interesting keynote and I'm sad that I won't be there till Wednesday. I'm going to miss that. But if you are at IBMA, do go and see that. Um, Also, if you're at IBMA, Dark Shadow, as always, are doing a bunch of... um, unofficial showcases they will be in the hospitality suite the presidential suite and the marriott um so they've gone up a size in terms of rooms and they're putting together their schedule now um but it's going to be music every night from monday to thursday and because it's in the marriott rather than part of the ramble you don't actually need a conference pass to attend those showcases um i'll give you some more news on those when they come because there's some really cool stuff on Dark Shadow, so there'll be some interesting things happening there. But also, there's all sorts of showcases going on during IBMA, official and unofficial. Um, if you are in a band, if you run a label, if you are anything to do with any of those showcases, if you send me the info, or just post about them on social but tag me, I will share them while we're out at IBMA for that week, so people who are there can help put their schedules together, because there's so much stuff goes on. And I, mean, I remember one night last year, sort of having to decide between going to see Jake Eddy and East Nash Grass and getting entirely derailed by a beautiful performance from the Kruger Brothers that kind of gave me three things to do at the same time. And uh, just like, there's so much amazing music on. So yeah, if you are involved in these showcases, let me know or tag me during the week and I will share the info as we go. Um, what else? There's more more international news because there's a bit, of, a bit of European involvement in this one. Um, Vesson and Hawktail have their new record coming out on September the 20th, which is Friday. Um, there's been a couple of singles from that already there's some stuff on the grass is mostly new playlist if you want to go and hear that Um, I love it, I've been listening to it one of the joys of doing this podcast is getting to listen to new music and rekindled my love for it but also I'm lucky enough that I get to hear some of this stuff before it's out people send me things to listen to and I've been listening to this one and really really enjoying it Um, so yeah, that'll be out on Friday do go and listen to that I think they're heading out on tour as well um, I think this week, so check the, either the Vesson or Hawktail or Padiddle Records websites for information on that. I'll find a link and stick it in the show notes. Um, I'll also put a link into where you can pre-order that record too. Um, and more international news is Charlotte Karibic, who was one of the earliest guests on this podcast. Um, English guitarist. She's she's phenomenal. She's so good. Um, she was in a band called Midnight Sky Racer. She's done all sorts of stuff with her sister Laura um, in a duet with fiddle player Kieran Towers, but she's got a record, her first, I think, first sort of full solo record out of her own original uh, tunes written for guitar and played with the full band, and it's coming out in November, it's called Sensible or Otherwise, and so I will have more info on that nearer the time, and I'm hoping to chat to her about that record as well. For those of you who don't know Charlotte, she was at Brian Sutton's Blue Ridge Guitar Camp as an instructor this summer. She's she's just really cool, I can't, you know, stress enough what a great guitarist she is, and how much I'm looking forward to this record. So yes, I will definitely bring you more on that when it comes. Um, But I think that is it for Church Street News. Let's move on to The Grass Is New, because there's a few cool new releases I want to talk to you about. And 
and we have more of an international flavour in the new releases too. But first, I want to tell you about an exciting project that has been a while in the making. Um, Andy Statman has a record called Bluegrass Tracks, which was recorded in four days just before the pandemic shutdown kicked in, um, which involves Ron Stewart, Brian Sutton, Mike Bubb, um, and guest spots from Ricky Skaggs and Tim O'Brien. Um, and it's Andy Statman, a bunch of original stuff, a bunch of bluegrass classics. Um, really excited to hear that. Um, I've popped a track in the Grass is Mostly New playlist, and I will stick a link to where you can go and get this record as well. But yeah, just exciting to have Andy Statman putting out a bluegrass record. Um, what's not to love about that? Uh, next up, Brenna McMillan. She's got a new record coming out called Dear Life later this year, but she's got a new single called Black Bear, which was written with Maddie Denton from East Nash Grass, um, which is out now, and I've also stuck that in the playlist. Just been listening to that this morning. I'm really enjoying it. Um, hoping to bump into Brenna somewhere out in Rally next week and have a quick chat with her for the podcast. But yeah, go and listen to Black Bear. That's in the playlist now, and keep an eye out for the record later in the year. I'll let you know more about that when it's coming. Um, and on to a couple of international bits. There's a British bluegrass band uh, called Blue Lass because they are all female and Lass for those of you who don't know is a northern British word for girl <laughs> so a bit of cultural context for you there but Blue Lass yeah they were down at Purbeck Folk Festival last year I was down there um, and they have been on the scene now for a year or two and they've got their first record out called Skylines and Coal Mines and you might remember a while ago on one of these episodes I mentioned um, they were crowdfunding for that but that is out now and there's a track from that in the Grass is Mostly New playlist too. Go and listen to that. Very cool. And um, Grassy Strings, who are a bluegrass duo from India, have a debut record out called Five. And I've popped a track from that in the playlist as well. So we're covering some nice international bases here, which is nice in the lead-up to RBMA. Um, so all of that is in the playlist. Andy Statman's Bluegrass Tracks, there's something in it from there. Brennan McMillan's Black Bear, um, Blue Lass, and Grassy Strings. Go and have a listen. It's on Spotify. There's a link in the show notes. It's basically a rolling, ongoing 2024 What's New Bluegrass String Band playlist. So it's chock full of stuff. If you haven't had a listen, go and just you know stick it on shuffle and hear some new music. Um, so the next bit up is Scroll On Buddy, which is just something that I've spotted on the internet, on the socials, and wanted to share. And there's a couple of bits this week. Mostly I've just been watching the socials for announcements of what's going on at IBMA. Um, you know, who's playing the showcases, who's playing the stages, what the lineup's going to be, what's going on, just getting excited, because I can't wait to go back out for that. Uh, it's going to be very, very cool. Um, but the other thing I spotted is Steep Canyon Rangers, um, who have been around for a while now. Uh, they've hit the landmark of 10 of their albums have been number one on the Billboard Bluegrass charts, which ties with the record set by Old Crow Medicine Show. So congratulations to Steep Canyon Rangers. It's a very cool achievement. They've been an absolute staple bit of the bluegrass scene for quite some time now, and that's an amazing achievement. So congratulations to them. Um, the only real thing is to now mention what I've been listening to this week, and I've mostly been listening to the Vesson and Hawktail record um, for the last couple of days on sort of repeat, really. I'm very much enjoying it. Um, but that's it for this week. I will be flying out to IBMA next week, which is going to disrupt the schedule a little bit, but I will be back with some content and lots of good bits and some really interesting things coming up on the podcast over the next couple of months. Um I will no doubt share some content from IBMA while I'm out there. Um, so if you don't get to go and you want to see what it looks like, just follow my social channels and I will share some bits with you. Uh, but that's it. As always, go to bluegrassjamalong.com for lists of interviews, all the backing tracks, links to various bits and pieces. It's all on there. Um, as I said before, please do share an episode with people if you've got friends who like Bluegrass who don't know about this podcast. But I think that is it. That brings to an end. What's well, been a fairly long briefing this week, uh, which is good. But I will see you next time. Have a great week and happy picking. Bluegrass Jam Along is proud to be sponsored by Collings Guitars and Mandolins, making some of the finest guitars and mandolins in the world since the 1970s. Visit collingsguitars.com and find out why.